Good morning, folks. The Real Captain Kirk here live from Weather Trend 360 Studios here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. It is Friday morning, about 10 o'clock on the East Coast. We'll do a quick update here on the big snowstorm moving across the country here today. Uh, looking at the track here again, you see the signs of the storm. Uh, it's actually developing right now um, way, way south of that uh, snow band up in South Dakota, Minnesota. The main low is actually developing right now in uh, southeast uh, Colorado. Uh, by later this afternoon, it'll be in the Kansas, Oklahoma area. Then uh, tomorrow morning, it'll be moving into the Missouri, Arkansas area. And then by uh, Saturday evening, it'll be rapidly moving toward Kentucky, Tennessee, eastern Kentucky area. And then by uh, Sunday morning, it'll be moving off the mid-Atlantic and then straight up uh, the east coast. Actually, the, the track here is uh, pretty close to the coast, um, so this makes the heavy snow a little bit inland from the huge cities of uh, D.C., Philly, New York. We'll talk about a little... Uh, uncertainty in that track as it gets closer to the east coast here but uh, the time frame for the the big event is uh, saturday afternoon evening uh, sunday in the northeast where the the heaviest uh, snow will occur looking at the uh, estimated snowfall totals here and we'll talk about this as kind of a blend of some of the models but uh, the official forecast here would actually show um, lighter snow down toward philly and new york uh, you know more toward the one, two inches down in Philly area, and you know maybe three, four, five inches uh, in the New York City area. But the important thing to here, Lehigh Valley, we're probably looking at six to eight inches. The important thing to note is just the the gradient here, uh, a slight shift of 50 to 70 miles, and there there's a difference between about 70 miles between two of the more reliable models at this stage. Um, the Euro is a little further more north in this pattern here, um, with the heaviest snow obviously in the northern PA, Adirondacks, you know, where the one to two foot heavy, heavy snow will be. But uh, the NAM, which is another good uh, short, shorter term model, better than the USGFS when you get into this two day window, uh, actually has the six inch snow line all the way down in here into DC, Philly, uh, south of New York City. So again, you're only talking about a 75 mile shift between the Euro and the NAM. Um, and again, models just simply aren't that good. So if you have expectations that uh, weather technology can uh, be that precise, um, even a day out, uh, even hours out, uh, they simply aren't. They just can't handle it. A good example is the November blizzard where we had um, models were showing the same kind of a system where the warm air is going to kind of invect in uh, aloft. Uh, so that's going to be a heavy thump snow here in the, in the Northeast. But then the, the fringe areas, if you're in this D.C. to Philly to New York corridor and south, um, the warm air aloft will help to melt the snow, and then you're just going to end up with a freezing rain to rain event, uh, maybe ending in some snow Sunday morning. Um, so the problem with that November storm was that there was the same scenario. A lot of warm air was supposedly going to be advected north, uh, you know, just uh, aloft, three, four, five thousand 5,000 feet up to change the snow to rain. Well, it didn't happen. Um, the models were even the day of, we're saying the thickness values of the, this cold air was going to be eroded, and it didn't. And we ended up with a, a pretty you know, major November storm. Similar scenario here a little bit. Um, so again, there is definitely uncertainty. Um, I would say, you know, that again, 75 miles. So if you're in that transition zone, say from uh, DC is probably pretty safe. They're probably not going to get much out of this one. But uh, if you're in the Philly to New York City, uh, obviously where millions of people live, um, there's certainly some upside potential here. Um, so again, there could be some surprise here because there's a pretty huge difference between the Euro and the NAM, which again are only about uh, 75 miles apart. So these are kind of the estimated snowfall here is for the storm total. Uh, we'll run through these day by day. Uh, most of the snow here in the northeast has ended with the first little weak system. You see the heavier snow in the plains for the storm that's developing. That'll expand. Uh, again, the storm is actually well south of this area, but the, the heavier snow is obviously well to the north of the storm. So Chicago's looking at a good 8-inch uh, plus storm event here. This is a little further north than the last system they went through. Then obviously as we get into Sunday, the, the heavy snow is again just really from the Harrisburg right through Lehigh Valley, just north of New York City into extreme southern Danbury, Connecticut area and then just south of Boston. So again, any point north of that, you're going to definitely be in the getting closer into that uh, 6 to 12 plus inch rain. And then obviously in the Adirondacks, we're looking at, you know, 1 to 2 feet plus. And then uh, Martin Luther King Jr. holiday Monday morning. Um, big thing here we'll be talking about is a massive uh, freeze, a rapid freeze. And then we see the next system, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, and then maybe we'll see if this is another coastal event for Thursday. We'll run through these one more time here. So today, most of that snow in the northeast is starting to wind down. You see the system developing in the plains here today. Tomorrow, it's really getting cranking up in the Midwest. Um, Saturday afternoon, Sunday mid-afternoon is the big event for the northeast. Um, and then all winding down Monday, Tuesday, and then we gear up for maybe the next storm midweek. Um, 
we're to estimate here again for the next two weeks this is just a two week model total snowfall estimate so if you miss this storm there are several behind this one uh, so don't get too disappointed here uh, the pattern has definitely shifted and we'll talk about that here in a second here with the, the polar vortex uh, breaking apart um, so again a lot of snow here across the country here to uh, end january no, haven't seen this really in the last couple of years january's been pretty warm actually the last four years january's ended on a warm note so this year's pretty pretty cold um, if we uh, look at that uh, Monday morning, the concern is that I, you definitely want to get your snow off the ground. Anything you have Sunday, uh, get it off your cars and your driveways Sunday afternoon. It's pretty much as soon as the storm is over because the, the cold there comes crashing in. Uh, you can see that zero line goes all the way just, just north of New York City, obviously not right in the city, just north of Philly. Uh, so everyone north of that is going to be near zero or a little bit below. Obviously, where the heavy snowpack is in the Adirondacks in New York, you know, well into the 20 below zero range. So this is a, a quick, rapid freeze. So even areas that just get uh, rain, uh, the freeze here will definitely make a very icy Monday morning. Fortunately, it's a holiday, so some of us are off. Um, but those that do have to get to work could be very, very slick uh, Monday morning. The freeze line actually goes all the way into south central Florida uh, Monday morning. So uh, part of this is uh, we can blame, and we're going to see here in a second here, that uh, the polar vortex is actually kind of split into a, a few vortices, if you will. Uh, so rather than have one big massive vortex, as you typically have over the North Pole region, it's been kind of hanging out over Siberia um, here in December. So that's why December is a little bit mild in the east, eastern U.S. here. But um, that has shifted and kind of broken apart. And when, when this happens, when the polar vortex happens, what you allow it to happen is that the, the colder air from the Arctic can actually move south. Um, a good example of this is last year. Last year, the polar vortex started breaking up in uh, late February. So we had a really warm February last year, and then the polar vortex kind of broke apart, um, allowing the cold Arctic air to finally plunge into the U.S. in March and April, and we ended up having the coldest, snowiest March, April in 21 years. Um, so this is happening right now it's happening much earlier than it did last year so that's why we believe february is going to be pretty epically cold and snowy this is going to uh, typically when the vortex breaks up like this you have about a four to six week period of extreme cold and snow in the eastern north america uh, so eastern canada eastern u.s eastern half of the u.s certainly it's happening now uh, so we'd say here from mid-january through probably you know at the most um, early march um, usually it's about a six week pattern four weeks on the, the minimum side. So we have at least four, five, six weeks of uh, some of this brutal cold and snow to contend with and a parade of storms here. Um, the, the good news with this storm getting out of here, hopefully Sunday night, is we have the big lunar eclipse that's uh, visible across all of North America, South America. Um, so the good news is we think actually you're gonna probably be able to see this. The storm, uh, maybe not in New England, but from New York City, clouds may actually break up enough that we're actually gonna be able to see this eclipse. It starts, uh, it starts technically in the New York City area around 9.36. Um, the full eclipse begins around 11.41 p.m. Sunday night and then goes into the midnight hour and then it uh, full eclipse ends at about 12.43 in the morning. So you're going to have some clouds uh, in their viewing area here, but probably not complete overcast by any means. So uh, we'll look at the percent cloud cover here um, again. So 32 to 40 percent cloud cover. Uh, again, so breaks in the cloud. You'll definitely be able to see it uh, in the eastern PA, New Jersey, New York, tri-state area. Across all of this south, this looks really good here. These are uh, the blue areas are where you have the best viewing areas. The dark gray areas where you have the, the least viewing area. So again, something to look forward to here after the big snowstorm. Um, with that, folks, have a great weekend, and we will be back here Monday morning with our full Captain's Log update. Have a, have a great and safe weekend.